industry as the architect, engineer, and at the end, the artist. See. And this yes, is a, you know, just embellished, decorate. De decorate. There is a still deep, deeply, uh, the idea that art, uh, or, or if you nowadays you enter in a park, you listen music without any attention. It's uh, I, I I become crazy. The, 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 the new, the, there is no so because it's something that you do your job and after and plus there is the music, but the music so the art is completely integrated in what 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 we call atmospheres, which determines our lives. Atmosphere determines our lives. Even even worse. I mean, uh, some say some say we stop because we are we launching yeah. together. But I mean even worse. When I eat something, I would like to have something like a salad with the map of the ingredients. So I, I would enjoy much more of the food. And we put it together so the story of kind of affect by taste, but also uh, awareness, which is something not separated by the idea of instinct. So let's let's do it. Mm. And they also think, therefore, art becomes the emperor's new clothes, oh, having them over on us. Because of this, it's a joke. No, it should be. That's true. Yeah. So, but positioning things uh, in their time, shifting their time. James Joyce, you know, why he writes another way. What's the big deal? The big deal is no one did write this way. Yeah, so if you can turn the corner there, have a look. But that's because the idea that art doesn't carry knowledge. Yeah, that it doesn't carry knowledge, and it actually does carry knowledge, and it and it's tied to its time. So, absolutely. Few years ago, something like one thing is to enjoy music on your sofa. Another thing is to make the effort to yeah. Why don't you make it an effort? Yeah. Enjoy. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. If I don't listen to, yeah. 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 No, I think we fixed it, yeah. I was I was messaging with the person in Boston trying to I was like okay. 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 Well, is it recording? What? Yeah. <laughs>
Okay, thanks. Hi. Okay, so thank you, Leah. Um, we have uh, the artist um, Tamam Azam, who was part of the um, uh, initial uh, Innovate Heritage as well. And he was not able to join us today, but I wanted to include his work because I think it's really important. Um, and also really nice to have more visual art to look at. So um, do you want to just kind of, oh, or give me the keyboard, okay. <laughs> um, so yeah, so Tamam Azam um, is a Syrian artist who is based in Berlin now. And he um, became sort of, popular as an artist during the conflicts in around 2014 through a series of work that he did um, that <clears throat> took uh, images of destruct destruction that was happening around and <clears throat> superimposing um, kind of classical traditional art over it as a way to kind of draw attention to um, you know looking away or not or not looking. Um, and these just, um, this was, you know, some initial work he was making in response to what was happening and it, you know, gained popularity. That's one of the ways we found out about him. Um, and anyway, so the thing that I, that I've noticed about this work is that it's very like, um, it's very like collage, very pop culture focused and, um, kind of very raw, like it was just kind of in the moment. So the reason that I think it's helpful to look at his work too is that the evolution of his work is quite different, but it's with the same themes. Um, and I have some descriptions of like him writing about his work, but um, my kind of um, uh, analysis or kind of uh, addition to it is that, um, so this is still some of the older stuff, um, is that his work has become more complex, which kind of mirrors what happens over the 10 years, like how the um, representation of trauma is, uh, is illustrated visually within work. So um, this is some of his newer work. Um, and he started using collage, but you can see this is still uh, like an image of like, you know, destruction of, of people being displaced, um, but, it's um, taking it, I mean, you can see such a big difference from this like kind of pop art yeah. to being much more abstract and nuanced, which, you know, when you think about how memory functions and things become more complex and also more distant um, and his relationship to work, you know, he's still been working with these images over the years. This is um, not collage, but you know, it's obviously very different in this one, this image emotes so much emotion, right? It's very, kind of depressing, but it's it's very um, vivid. And there's so much uh, kind of loose shapes, but you can still really tell this kind of, get this impression of destruction of an urban environment. Same with, same with this piece, um, really powerful work. So this is, you can see an individual climbing down and, um, and then, these, this is another collage piece. So some of his work has become, you know, the new landscape that he's existing within living in Germany now. Um, and yeah, but um, I don't know. It's, 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 it, it, it's a really interesting way of accessing, you know, this, this, these ideas that we're talking about in a theoretical framing, but the emotional tone that you can kind of get from the visual interpretation. He, he actually was very resistant to even writing something. He's like, I am an artist. I, I use my pictures and my painting to talk, you know? So, um, but I was like, but there's something behind it. <laughs> so, um, very powerful work, but still kind of, you know, like has that, that, that through line. Um, and a lot of relationship to memory. So, and this is, you know, this is also the evolution of his craftsmanship um, artistically as he's developed his work. Um, and as he's aged, like his relationship to time and space in these different ways. So it's another one that seems reminiscent of the, the past works. I think this might be the last one. Yeah. So just really quickly, I wanted to read his description of his work. Um, 
Um, over the years, I have constantly varied my process. Like a lot of artists, I'm always on the lookout for new techniques that can disrupt my way of working and lead to something new. I move between different materials and different techniques, fabric and painting have for many years been the mediums I've most often turned to, but also work um, in digital um, art and photo montage, where the technology has allowed me to play with ideas in different ways and led me to new artistic vision, which I can integrate into my work as well as new ways to reach people with it. As an artist, the only thing I can do is try to make evocative and thoughtful images relating um, to what I have and continue to witness. Um, and his biography was that he was born in Damascus, uh, Syria, and he started painting at 10 and subsequently went to um, study fine art at Damascus University, specializing in oil painting. While at university, he participated in a workshop with renowned German-based artist um, Maxen Kabas Pashi, who became um, a huge influence on in the future direction of his work. Uh, while living in Syria, Tamam combined his fine artwork with prolific graphic design career, um, an experience which came to inform his artistic response to the conflict that engulfed his homeland. In 2011, Tamam was forced to leave Syria and relocate to an a, a UAE. <clears throat> Having lost his beloved studio in Damascus, he found himself looking for new ways to create art and express his feelings about the loss of his home country. Tamam used his understanding of graphic design to create the digital art pieces <clears throat> that would gain him a worldwide record that would gain him worldwide rec recognition. He used images of the destruction of his homeland to create viral images juxtaposing the violence of the Syrian war with masterpieces from the classical European canon, posing questions about the net the nature of beauty global inequality and the challenging role of the image in the digital age. Work such as Freedom Graffiti was widely shared on social media and became an iconic image of the Syrian revolution. In 2016, Tamam re relocated once again, this time to Germany, beginning <clears throat> with a residency um, at the Institute for Advanced Studies um, in Delmenhorst. Um, that was the start of a new artistic phase, exploring new materials and techniques. Tamam's recent work employs both painting and collage, writing the barrier between figurative and abstract art. So, yeah. Does anybody have any thoughts or responses? Are you okay? So the thing about it is, you know, we get it immediately, and it's got kind of like a short shelf life because of that. I mean, it's interesting work. It yeah. Really sticks it out there, but it also because of that one liner. Yeah. Sort of becomes like a one liner almost. Yeah. This work is especially the early part of this work is really much so much more complex. Mm -hmm. You're not told what to think. Yep. And the first ones you you're told what to think. Yeah. It's kind of like didactic actually as a oddly even though it's pop it's didactic i, yeah. I think yeah and, and whereas these works are not open they're, they're quite marvelous yeah yeah well i think that's a, that kind of illustrates what i was trying to explain of like how you know like when you're inside of the the shock of trauma See. It, yeah. it, it's like a visual representation of that it's just like it's just very it's like kind of a punch like mm. it's like because mm. there's not a lot of capacity for sitting inside of depth and complexity in the same way and then with time there's a deepening in a relationship and understanding what happened you have time to process and then it becomes more complex and this is the visual representation of how his work evolves mm -hmm. you know so anyways yeah so cool thank you very much yeah okay Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Valeria Morea, and I am an assistant professor at Erasmus University, uh, where I teach um, cultural economics, cultural management, and cultural policy. Um, today, I am unfortunately online. I wish uh, I could be uh, physically present in Rome uh, with you and exchange ideas and get inspired by your work. Unfortunately, uh, I can't be there due to some overlapping commitments, uh, but I look forward to next time uh, I will be able to uh, join an event uh, in the um, uh, umbrella of um, Innovate Heritage. Um, so today my presentation uh, is entitled Universities as a Last Resort of Sustainable Development in the Creative City. Uh, an inquire of Venice, Italy. And this uh, working paper is co-authored with uh, Professor Mariangela Lavanga, who's an associate professor at Erasmus University, uh, and PhD student Cosimo Ferrigolo, who is uh, at U uh, of University of Venice. Um, so today I am going to uh, share the insights, the best that we have at the moment uh, about this working paper. I will start with some theoretical, with the theoretical framework, talking about higher education institutions, creativity, and civil society in the city. I will also present my research questions. I will present the methods, and finally, I will discuss the case study, the findings, and what's next. Um, so, first of all, um, we know that uh, higher education institutions uh, play a very important role in the city, so much so that they have been considered anchor institutions and uh, or civic actors. Uh, for example, uh, regarding uh, agglomeration economies uh, in co uh, economic geography, we know that there are some elements um, which play uh, a key role in fostering urban growth, regional development, and universities are one of them. In fact, they transfer knowledge, not just to pupils, but also to, uh, to students, but also to um, uh, firms. Uh, in fact, they are at the core of the triple helix model of innovation. Uh, and not just because they share knowledge, uh, they have such an important role, they or they, their third mission is uh, increasingly important. And the third mission uh, in, um, is very much the important, like the role, really describes the role of the university as a civic actor, uh, going beyond its walls, but also beyond what is typically considered third mission, which is the spin-offs and the patents which result out of the activities of the university, um, but also playing a specific role in the city, which is a civic role. And in this, this, is, this is also where uh, we start with our intuitions for uh, this work. Um, at the same time, uh, similarly to what institution, uh, higher education institutions are, creativity is also a very important uh, uh, player in the city. Uh, creativity is uh, increasingly fostered, uh, considered as a driver of urban growth. Um, we, the, the literature about this starts with a functionalist approach to culture, which um, see it as uh, useful to improve the quality of life uh, in cities. So for example, we, uh, read, we can read and we can also uh, experience examples of flagship uh, cultural ledge uh, regeneration. Uh, one big example could be the uh, building of um, the uh, Guggenheim Museum in Bilbao, for example. Uh, but also we have, uh, there is a very uh, intense debate around 
uh, the, create, the Creative City, which started with Landry Bianchini in 1995 and then evolved with Florida and then um, also got um, uh, criticized later by Scott. Um, so while we have such a functionalist approach, at the same time, we, in our experience, we know that the, this approach also uh, has to deal with um, uh, some consequences. Um, so there are tensions uh, emerge regarding how using culture to improve cities uh, is sustainable. <clears throat> some examples, uh, mass tourism, but also socioeconomic tensions uh, whereby uh, uh, wealth is uh, unevenly distributed, such as uh, as, as then it is often experienced in a housing crisis. Um, as a third act to all this, um, we, and, and most importantly, as a, as, as a reaction to the tensions arising from uh, the use of culture in cities, uh, the role of city society emerges. Um, Literature is increasingly uh, considering the importance of civil society as, uh, for example, an extension of the tribal uh, elix model, where, whereby uh, together with uh, private industry, the government and universities, also civil society uh, is, uh, um, is at the center of regional and uh, urban uh, sustainable growth. Um, so, um, and it's important to pay attention to, um, to, to what civil society uh, does in the form of grassroots, bottom-up or informal uh, modalities of getting together and organizing about how cities can grow sustainably. And I have previously done uh, uh, some research on this, but I am definitely not the only one. Uh, so this said, um, we... Uh, um, we wanted to investigate how these three elements, namely in, uh, universities, uh, creativity, and uh, civil society, uh, play together in uh, a city which is Venice, uh, which is a very specific case in itself. So how we approached this research. Um, uh, drawing from previous work with uh, Francesca Sabatini, uh, uh, we uh, could benefit from a, um, a map uh, of um, grassroots and underground, what have, can also be called invisible um, collectives uh, in the city and in the mainland. We have uh, 28 of them at the moment operating um, with uh, participant observation and interviews which are still ongoing, uh, we collected a lot of qualitative data, but also through action research workshops, one of which uh, will be, um, um, uh, will happen soon, hopefully. Um, so the case study we said is Venice. Uh, in, in essence, it's, it's a very specific case. It's a special one because it can be considered exemplar, but at the same time unique. And uh, I know these two terms are quite excludable, but um, Venice is um, a heritage city, even pledged with uh, the UNESCO uh, um, 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 label since uh, 1987. Um, besides the uh, official um, uh, status of heritage city, there is also a rich cultural and creative environment. Um, prominently, uh, prominently um, um, in terms of high culture and craftsmanship, Venice, geographically speaking, also has a very peculiar morphology because there is a very clustered center, uh, the island. Uh, there is a, a lot of lagoon islands, and then there is an industrial periphery and uh, residential mainland. Um, all this. Uh, all the, the characteristics of the city stress a uh, process of what has been des defined as Uh So Venice um, becomes a city in which uh, mass tourism can thrive uh, and the economy of mass tourism can thrive. Um, and 
looking at social demographic data, um, uh, we see a, um, a steady uh, decreasing trend in resident population in the city and also in mainland. Um, so Venice is a city in which uh, tensions are um, always there. Um, and it is very in intricate the way in which the universities, the creatives, uh, the tour, the mass tourism industry, uh, and the high culture institutions also play together. Um, so the research questions uh, that we pose is uh, are uh, what role do higher education institutions play in fostering the local cultural milieu in a perspective of sustainable uh, urban life? The question is, in fact, can hard as in formalized and soft as in non-formalized institutions work together towards a more sustainable future. I was mentioning how Venice is a specific case study, is an interesting case, and uh, we see that there is a specific trend of decreasing population. Here, just some uh, facts and figures. We see that the population has uh, been steadily decreasing um, uh, since the 70s in, um, um, in the uh, historical sense, no, since, the, since the 70s everywhere, not just in uh, the historical center. Um, so um, at the same time, we see that uh, the, population of, uh, the, the population of Venice is not just the people who work and live there, but there is also a very interesting uh, slice of this cake, which are um, uh, students. Um, the number of students is uh, considerable uh, and uh, slightly increasing uh, over time. Um, here is a very, uh, I think it's an insightful comparison between um, the what students study predominantly in uh, Venice uh, and um, compared to other uh, com uh, comparable cities. Uh, of the same size where universities have the same size uh, of the ones in Venice. Uh, so we see how uh, here is, is a simple comparison between students of arts and humanities graduates and uh, ICT uh, graduates. And we see that Venice uh, has a striking uh, preference. Venice students have a striking preference for arts and humanities. This is probably a link uh, with the uh, vocation of the city as a heritage uh, city. Um, beyond, uh, besides that, there is. Uh, we can also compare this with uh, the cultural venues and the cultural facilities present in the city, and we see how, in the comparable. Um, uh, comparably sized cities of Europe, Venice uh, is the one with the most attra cultural attractions. So not just, so in terms of higher education institutions, we see this cultural vocation and in terms of local cultural economy and you know the, the uh, possibilities of uh, consuming culture, we also see how Venice is prominent in that. <coughs> so, um, let me uh, start now the final part of this presentation in which I can discuss uh, what we have found so far in terms of results. So the general uh, um, uh, take home message so far for us is that uh, Venice tells a tale of opportunities and tensions. Um, the first uh, group of these results, uh, interviews have been, uh, by the way, thematically analyzed uh, with Atlas TI. Um, so the first theme uh, is the panda argument. Um, uh, a decadent uh, historical city center emerges. There is decreasing population, but also lack of spaces for creativity. The panda argument refers to um, unhappy a uh, joke that the uh, mayor of Venice, Brugnaro, uh, some time ago um, said about uh, Venetians, which are um, a species who's, ex uh, who's getting extinct, like pandas, basically. Um, so uh, here are some quotation, quotes that I got from the interviews. Um, 
Um, and uh, both in these cases, they highlight how uh, there is a uh, decreasing population, but also but, but there is some demand for creativity and the spaces lack. Uh, so students don't have uh, production spaces to work in to develop their also entrepreneurial ideas. Um, and uh, the student collective uh, 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 interviewees agree that uh, students can be a very important uh, uh, resource for uh, a sustainable development uh, of the city of Venice. The second uh, theme of our um, uh, results uh, is an argument of getting together. Uh, we see that there is a shared value of cooperation across different stakeholders and across departments. So among our interviewees, uh, we have uh, collectives, but we also have um, uh, professors of the university which have who have specific roles in uh, committees dedicated to um, the third mission that I mentioned before, but also directors of um, local uh, art institutions such as Bevilacqua La Massa, which is uh, an uh, emerging artist and a foundation for emerging artists in the city. And we see that um, um, not just the uh, bottom up, so not just civil society organizations. Uh, uh, are interested in looking at the students and uh, look, fighting for the city, but it seems that also um, the more institutional uh, actors uh, play uh, share such value of cooperation. So students are seen as consumers in general, but this view is wrong according to a U of professor. Um, but also um, the director of Bevilac Palamasa um, um, maintains that the big challenge is understanding the relationship between universities, the production of culture, art markets, but also the job market and housing. Um, uh, and he says, uh, we have to work in a team. Similarly, um, um, the most uh, prominent uh, squatted uh, building of the city, which is a cultural organization, uh, claims a university that addresses um, the territory, so the local environment that creates knowledge, uh, but also um, uh, uh, changes the way in which they operate, which they think is very much about seeking profits. Now, moving on to the third uh, theme, this is, this is the bridging argument. It, it's, um, uh, it tells us how formal and informal organizations critically engage with each other to promote a more sustainable creative city. So there is tensions, but there is also opportunities. And it seems that um, probably in a, in a slightly invisible way, things are happening in Venice. So there is a clear ferment, uh, even though maybe not with, which doesn't gather so much resonance uh, in public discourse. So for example, uh, a performing arts collective uh, mentions that the University of UF and the uh, Venezia Foundation acquired a space in Mestre, which is the mainland, uh, to make up for the lack of spaces and to strengthen their network. Um, um, the director of uh, Bevilacqua La Massa Foundation feels the responsibility uh, of doing something for the city to collaborate uh, and uh, also explains that there are uh, many projects in place um, in which the students, the emerging artists of the foundation cooperate with Fenice, uh, the theater, uh, the Biennale uh, and other foundations uh, are art uh, and heritage foundations of the city. Um, and also uh, another cultural space uh, in Judeca, which is a small island uh, next to uh, Venice City Historical Center. Um, they also have a steady dialogue with you, UF, um, and uh, they, found it, they, they found it very important. Uh, and, and, and as such, uh, we think that our research question can be answered with uh, a tale of opportunities and tensions in which some things are happening, uh, but certainly um, there is more that should happen. So this is where we're at now. Uh, our conclusions are uh, absolutely preliminary at this point, and uh, 
uh, if we have to give a, you know, a, a clear, uh, uh, straightforward answer to our research question is that in, in an endangered uh, but creative city like Venice is, universities are seen by the different actors that we interviewed as a last sustainable, uh, 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 as a last, par pardon me, resort of sustainable development. Uh, socially engaged creatives play uh, in between uh, the cultural and creative industry, so cultural production, and the knowledge actors like universities. So the next question will be what sustainable future can uh, we envision for Venice? So our idea with the research group is to, and my co-authors, is to organize an action research workshop with all the um, with the representative sample of the interviewees that we uh, talked to, to understand, uh, okay, there is tensions, there is opportunities, there is dialogue, but what is that um, uh, they imagine for Venice? If you have ideas about this, I would be uh, beyond happy to listen to your insights and suggestions. Uh, but also questions uh, if uh, my presentation today wasn't particularly clear, which I actually hope uh, it was. Uh, I would like to thank you immensely for listening to me at a distance. Uh, I, this is my uh, work email and I'm happy to receive your comments there. Thank you so much and thank you uh, Michele and all the group of Innovate Heritage for organizing this.